네. 원로 목사님께서 그동안 추석날에 뭐 하셨나 하고서 제가 좀 말씀을 다 거들떠 봤더니 I have looked over all the sermons 하셨더라고요. by Reverend Evan Park on the Chuseok um, season, and he's 교회 always 교회 actually had a special assembly during the Chuseok holiday. 네, I think of all the churches in Korea, um, there probably isn't any church that sings as great call anthem, saying awake, dawn is here. In the New Jerusalem. So I believe we are the only church that really praises God on this church of holiday and really, um, really meditates upon the word of God. And I'm certain that our God is so pleased with this and He will take our worship as a sweet aroma. And this sermon was from 2008. And October 28, the sermon was from Reverend Evan Park. So the title is Remember Lot's Wife. This message is based on Reverend Evan Park's sermon. Here, remember in Greek, is a present imperative form. Present imperative form. A present imperative form means you should not forget about keep remembering, keep thinking. So it says remember. So until the day of return from the Lord, Jesus really asked the saints, if you are the saints in the end times, you must never forget about what happened to Lot's wife and remember her. So we see in our main text in Luke chapter 17, verse 28, 동일한 본문을 가진 마태복음 24장을 Matthew 보시면 chapter 24 is a parallel verse. 34절 이하에 in verse 34 주님이 하신 and 말씀이 하나도 땅에 떨어지지 않고 not a single word of the Lord will be dropped on the ground but every word will be fulfilled. Therefore remember the days of Lot and then I remember the days of Noah and in Luke it says remember the days of Lot. Noah's days were explained in two verses, but um, many more verses from 28 to 31 um, explains about Lot. So you see, a lot more verses were given to explain for Lot. So we can see that we must really have a deeper reflection upon Lot's time. Luke chapter 17, verse 28, Lot's time it says it was the same as happened in the days of Lot. So days of Lot can refer to the entire lifetime of Lot. But what Jesus was referring to was the judgment that took place during the days of Lot. This judgment actually took place when Abraham was 99 years old, which was 2067 BC, when Sodom and Gomorrah received the um, and also Adma and Zeboim. Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zeboim. These four cities received the judgment. And this is Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 23. Speaks of the four cities that's not written out in Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19 lists only Sodom, but Deuteronomy reflects the four cities, Sodom and, and Gomorrah, and Adma and Zeboim. And after Jesus spoke about Lot's days in Luke chapter 17 verse 32, he says there is someone that we must really pay attention during the days of Lot, and that is his wife. So Jesus says, remember Lot's wife. So in Genesis chapter 19, was written about Lot's wife, and we must examine Genesis chapter 19 with a big emphasis on Lot's wife. 
came upon the city was actually when sun had risen over. So you can see 있습니다. the main text gives us exact time points. From the evening until the next day, the morning 떴습니다. dawned and the sun finally had risen over. So this is about 12 hours. Minimum. So we can see, based on Genesis chapter 19, 우리가 남의 얘기처럼 옛적 이야기처럼 보아서는 안 되고 이 사건이 12시간 안에 이루어진 매우 급박한 상황에서 이루어졌다는 것을 기억하는 것뿐만 아니라 Genesis 19. We must get the feel of the urgency of time as we read Genesis 19. Because if you read it without it, it will just seem to us like a, just a story. But it was actually something that took place very rapidly in a matter of 12 hours. A warning of judgment came when the evening, in the evening. And it's not even a less than a month, less than a day. This happened in less a matter of 12 hours. 이렇게, 이렇게, 이렇게 so, same thing applies to us. If we were given 12 hours and God's warning of the judgment came upon us, then we can't find out which person would we be in this story of Lot. Would you be the Lot? Would you be the son-in-laws? Or would you, would you be the daughter? Or would you be all those people of Sodom and Gomorrah who would be consumed with the fire? Or would you be Lot's wife? But among all those people, He's pointing out to Lot's wife, who actually came so close to the very end, he has already received the salvation. But at the very, very last line, she missed out on the fulfillment of salvation. Jesus says to remember her stance. What kind of place was Lot's wife in? So we must be able to perceive this through this background in chapter 19. So that how she was missed out from the salvation, we must feel that how, um, how a grade of anguish that will be to miss out from the salvation at the very last, last final phase. Second standard by which we must read the Genesis 19 is the space. Location. We can see that the scene um, changes four times in terms of location. The place where they must come together for salvation is mentioned twice in verse 12 and 16. Verse 12 and 16, um, they are told that they must go outside the city. And then in verse 17, going outside the city is not good enough. Must escape to the mountains. Must escape to the mountains in verse 17. But then, because Lot could not think of going all the way to the mountain, he wanted to change the place. 
And from verses 18 through 23, he asks that he can go to Zohar. He prays to God so that he can escape to Zohar. And then, after that, in verse 30, in the end, they went to the mountains, which God had told them earlier. Going outside the city, Uh, means from the terms of the world um, we, it's equivalent to us being inside the church it was already a miracle in itself that we came to the church but God says you should not be satisfied with that but you should you must escape to the mountains you must escape to the mountains why the mountains Why did Lot become very weak in his heart and asked God that he could escape to Zohar? Why did Lot end up changing the location of his refuge? In the middle. We must understand this deeply according to the Bible so that we can fully also understand for our end time. Because those people who are not ready, people who are not prepared, will not be able to partake in the salvation. It will be very hard for such people. Remember Lot's wife. That does not mean, yeah, there can be some people like her. Or maybe some people will not be like her. But Jesus was so worried that most of the people would be like Lot's wife. So in great anguish and sorrow in his heart, Jesus said to remember Lot's wife. It's he's not saying that Lot's wife will be like few people. Luke chapter 18, verse 8, Jesus says, When I return, will I see faith in this world? And Luke chapter 18, verse 1, you must pray without ceasing and do not despair. And he spoke in parable, and after that, he says, in Luke chapter 18, verse 8, in the conclusion, Jesus says, until I return, will there be someone who will uh, pray without ceasing, who will not despair, who will see faith? Who will have faith. We must be on the alert for prayer at all times. We must never grow in despair, saying the Father's promise is not coming true. But we must believe in the word just as they are and keep praying and welcome the returning Lord. And I pray this will all uh, happen to us. By a great miracle, we have been saved and we have been led outside the city. And now God is urging, commanding us to escape to the mountains. Maybe the mountain seems so far away. It seems so difficult to travel that far. We cannot even think about moving all the way to the mountains. It seems impossible. So we say, oh, but that city is much closer to us. It's a very small city, so help us to run away to that place. So God says, yeah, then I will not destroy Zor. What does this mean? God was going to destroy Zor too, but he says, I will not destroy Zor. This is so astounding. Because of Lot's prayer, Zor was saved. That instant moment, it was supposed to be a place of judgment, but that Zor was instantly changed the place of salvation that instant moment. But because Zor, Uh, Zor was not saved from the judgment not because they had righteous people in the city but that place was a, a same sinful city as it was before and so even after Lot um, fled to Zor he was afraid to stay there the people of Zor did not welcome him but actually became a city that gave great fear to Lot and so today Just as it is written in the main text, I'll have to examine two main things. First, four people who escaped outside the city and the three people who escaped Zor. 
first four people who escaped outside the city. It was four people who escaped uh, outside the city. In verse 16, uh, this is written. In verse 16, it says, we can 생각해봐야지. think of the two daughters first. The two daughters are written here. This is not normal that the daughters were saved. Whenever Reverend Evan Park spoke about this in year 2008, we often thought the Lot only had two daughters, right? But in Genesis 19, verse 12, it says, All those people who belong to you must escape for your sons-in-law or your children. Anyone who belongs to you, they must escape. But here, the children are referring to both the men and the women, sons and daughters. But in Hebrews, ben, in original text, it says ben, ben means son. But it's in plural form. That there are also sons there. There were more than two sons to Lot. Also, the word bat, which means daughters, and we can see that there were two daughters as well. Who are more precious, sons or daughters? Israel do not number women when they take census. And they are waiting for the seed of the Messiah. From the biblical point of view, it was not the sons, but the daughters were saved. This fact, the fact that the daughters, not sons, were saved, was very, very strange. This means the invitation to salvation was never mentioned to Lot's sons. If we look at this inner story of Lot's family, how Lot was not able to educate his children about life of faith, and there was a warning that 12 hours later there will be complete destruction in Sodom, and yet he was unable to disclose any of this to his sons. And that's how much the sinfulness of Sodom had stained the mind and heart of the Lot's family. And so Lot was able to give out the invitation to salvation to daughters and, and their husbands, sons-in-law. So Genesis chapter 19, verse 14, it says his sons-in-law, sons-in-law considered these warning of judgment as just. So Reverend Evan Park said these are the words, impossible words, uh, unrealistic words, the words that will never take place. It is a lie. What all nations will come? That will not happen. Look at the size of our church. That's unbelievable. It's a jest. In the end time, when the word is testified, those people who laugh at it, and those who consider these words as to be jesting, oh, somebody who is a, as eloquent um, will speak with a few verses in the Bible. That's how they regard the sermons, and they would not accept the sermons as the majestic word of God of terror. Reverend Evan Park says in the end time there will be churches that are really corrupt and they will take the sermons as jesting and even the preachers will preach the word as a joke. So people who preach, people who listen to the sermon, they should not preach a joke, they should not accept the sermon as a joke. 
So after Reverend Evan Park um, told me to start preaching, um, he would always point out and say that when you <laughs> preach today, you um, you have a bickering smile on you twice. You are not even ugly. You are not even pretty. Why do you laugh like that? That's how he really um, rebuke me. So he is really looking right through my heart as I preach. Even for one moment, when I am preaching the word of God at the pulpit, my mouth must become the mouth of God and must speak on behalf of this profound heart of Father God. That is why at our church, at the pulpit, we will never joke at the pulpit. We will only speak of the profound truth that's deeply immersed in the Bible. And those who believe this, those words that have come into their hearts will become living and active and perform great miracles in their lives. The sons-in-law consider the words as jesting. Even if you were to receive the greatest message in this world, if you keep the, if you take it as a joke, then you will not be partaker of the salvation. We must remember this. Sons in law considered the words as jesting. It was not spoken in the ear to those people who are seeing will be saved. There was no whispering um, to invite the salvation, but it was actually given to all the people really out loud. But the moment when they listen to this invitation to salvation, they have received it as a joke. They disregarded it and they interpreted it according to their own thoughts. That is what Genesis chapter 19 verse 14 says. These words appeared to the sons-in-law to be jesting. Now, secondly, it's Lot's wife. In verse 16, um, Lot's wife was saved, but you see how she escaped. But Abraham Park says this, Lot's wife came out, yes, but only in her body, but her heart did not leave with her. This person actually considers salvation to be bothersome. She's bothered by salvation. She's bothered by escaping. Right? In verse 16, it says, the man seized the hand of his wife. The word seize in Hebrew is hadzak, but it's in hipfil form. It is hipfil form. Hipfil means it's not by my own will or initiative, but it's caused by someone else's initiative. So now, the Hipfil stem of Hazak appears very often in the Old Testament. All of them are interpreted as um, the hardness of Pharaoh's heart. That's also in Hazak, Hipfil stem. And you, one day, Reverend Evan Park asked me, I find every person in the Bible who is stubborn, who is obstinate heart. Uh, maybe among us, uh, there are many people uh, who are very stubborn and obstinate heart. In the Bible, Pharaoh, Pharaoh was a person with the most hardened heart. And Reverend Park actually preached a sermon entitled God's Stubbornness. No one in this world can break the hardness of Pharaoh's heart and Pharaoh's stubbornness. But God broke, God broke that stubbornness of Pharaoh. So God's stubbornness and, uh, or God's hardness sometimes to us it seems like he made that too much. Sometimes he's driving us just too much. He's seizing our hand as if our wrist is in great pain. And so when, when Lot's wife would scream, say, Ouch! Why are you holding my hand so tight? If I like it, I'll go. I'll take care of myself. This is a Thanksgiving Day, why do you tell me to come to church? All the elders keeps calling me. And so the Hadzak, he feel form. Stubbornness. 
고집이 아니었던들. But if it weren't for God's stubbornness, if it wasn't for God's stubbornness, not a single person could not have left Sodom. 여러분 여기 계신 분들 전적으로 누구도 예외 없이 하나님의 이 사랑의 고집 때문에 이 성밖으로 나와서 이렇게 예배드리고 있다는 것을 믿으시기 바랍니다. Believe that because of His stubbornness of love, because stubborn love, we are all here outside the city and this church worshiping God. See, Lot's wife was bothered by salvation. She says, "Ow, ow! I don't want to be seized by him. I don't want to come out of church like that." We are unqualified. We are not qualified. Like me, but even though we are not qualified, because of God's amazing. Stubborn love, we have received the salvation. This is historical fact that is written in the Bible. Thirdly, who was saved? Who escaped? Lot himself. Lot himself. Lot himself. Lot himself. We have great expectation of Lot now, right? 여러분 지금 이두 사람이 구원받는 게 누구 때문에 구원받습니까? Who because of who? These two groups of people were saved because of Lot, right? Because Lot is the one who received the prophecy. Lot. Um, was a man of a great mission and responsibility. That's why if you have received this warning from God, that means you are a man of great responsibility. So they brought in the two daughters and lots of wives to church, but they are divided in different opinions, and they have many different thoughts, right? So everything depends on lot. To really take full control, right? But do you know what the Bible says? Lot was actually hesitant. Lot was hesitant. He hesitated. That's why the angel sees his hand. If we have understood the word in clarity, then we are standing in the leadership because we have been removed all of the um, heresies, her heretical accusations, right? And so when we go back home, we are able to firmly say to the family members that we were never heretics from the beginning. We can clearly um, speak to the people that now it's been completely removed. Right, we should be very solemn and we must be very clear of our status. But then if you are really not convicted of this, you're even shaking in yourself. Oh, but they said, you know, they're going to watch over us for two years. And, you know, they might take away this resolution of um, heretical accusations. They, you know, they, if you're not really clear about this, then yeah, you'll be shaken and you cannot really um, clarify this to your family members. I believe that when those people who will watch us uh, may you accept them, accept them with great faith so that they can receive great grace through us as well. But the truth is that we were never heretics from the beginning. That sets us apart from the rest of the, the other three groups who received um, uh, the special pardon. Other churches, because they taught the wrong um, doctrine on tri Trinity of God, you know, and um, some churches actually taught about demonism, right? And so they actually corrected themselves saying, that I acknowledge our, our incorrect doctrines, we will correct it. And out of these conditions, they receive the special pardon, right? But our church, it doesn't matter how much we are investigated. There is nothing that we have never done wrong. You know, uh, even this misunderstanding that we are related to mis uh, uh, unification church, that was, you know, really... Uh, a complete false understanding, a false fact.
And they even said uh, wrongly accused Reverend Evan Parr for preaching that Cain was born between Eve and the serpent. He's never spoken word like that before. So everything that led the Pyongyang church to the heretical accusation was all based on falsified information. It was all misunderstanding. So when they investigated us, it was revealed that we are a truly, truly a clean of all this condemnation. You know, yes, we can be sensitive. We don't even understand why the word pardon has to be used because we have never done anything wrong from the beginning, right? But just as Korean independence came as a bread of heaven, it was something that God granted. Yesterday, uh, Reverend Philip Lee uh, made an announcement and he was so, you know, frustrated and he was so drained of all the strength. And so he took all the men's ministry and he said, even if it rains, we're going to go up to the mountain and pray. And as a man with the responsibility, he was really desperate. You know, he's not able to really share the depth of his heart to all the congregation. And so he led the people to strive to pray. Uh, Pastor Philip Lee says, you know, he, it's not he who did this, who brought this about, but it was by God. God. Imagine yourself in the seat of Reverend Evan Park just for one day under this false condemnation of being a heretic because Reverend Evan Park is amazing stubbornness. That's why, that, that's why our church is where we are now. You know, continuously he gave this box of grapes to that person, box of apple to that person, you know, always keeping a good relationship with other people because one day there will be a disillusion of this false accusation. And he says, it's okay if I am condemned as a heresy. Okay, but I cannot leave this stigma for my children, my congregation, even all the all the little children at our church. They cannot stay in, under this false stigma. And so he wrote this letter on December 17, 2013. He said, I confess uh, that we believe and uh, we make the confession of Westminster. We have the same Calvinism doctrine, and so, so he wrote this letter in 2013, you know, December 17. And so on the first day when they cast a lot uh, a vote, uh, when they cast a vote, they have uh, four votes yes, four votes no. So that means rejection legally, right? Yes, it was the fact that it was four to four was already a great workings of God. But after we did three days of dawn service, and we... And in the end, the decisive factor that actually turned everything over into our favor was a letter that Reverend Evan Park wrote in the year past 2013 on December 17th. That was the final hidden card that reversed everything. I think Reverend Evan Park is listening to us right now from heaven. Let us give big applause. I'm sure he is the most pleased right now. So Lot himself, he is such a man of a great responsibility, a central figure, and yet he hesitated, right? So we have examined the two daughters, Lot's wife and Lot himself. Now they were not saved because they're qualified to be saved, but it was because of God's stubbornness, his hadzak, and he fills them. Now, big number two, let us look at three people who escaped to Zor. Three people who escaped to Zor. And who is missing here? Lot's wife is missing. Lot's wife is missing from this list. So we have been saved and led to outside the city. The place to gather to receive the salvation is changing from the outside the city now next to Zor. In verse 19, chapter 19, until you go to Zor, until you receive your, if, until you're saved, I cannot rest my heart. So it would be very nice if you go to the mountain, it would be nice, but you're going to go to Zor. So I will not destroy Zor. 
You see how much God yielded, yielded after yielding, so that He can make sure to save Lot. Look at this Zohar. Among the people who escaped Zohar, we can see Lot's wife is missing from the scroll. In verse 17, what God says, after you escaped to the outside the city, after you escaped outside the city, what he says this commands to first escape. In the other common translation, he said, you must run away with all your strength. He says, escape for your life. So when they had brought them outside, God says, do not look behind you. Secondly, first, he says, escape for your life. Secondly, do not look behind you. So even if you have been led outside the city, if you do not keep these four commandments, all the escaping, all the salvation you had thus far will become vain. And thirdly, do not stay. Third command is do not stay. And fourth command is to escape to the mountains. Escape to the mountains. This urgency, this urgent timing can be seen through these four commands. Escape for your life. There's no matter of choice. You have to only look forward. Do not look behind. Do not look behind. This means um, look behind is nabat in Hebrew, but it's again in the Hifil stem. God, let me just turn, look behind just once. Forgive me. No, there will not be a second chance. If you do it just once, that is it for you. It's over. It's not that God does not have compassion. The, the word nabat actually gives us the answer. Because nabat means to fixate upon something. Now in verse 15, uh, chapter 15, it says look towards something or gaze at something for a long time. But the problem is that it's written in Hitfield stem. It's not actually looking at something uh, by your own initiative, willingly, but you are being forced to look. Yeah, you're the one who's doing the looking, but the other forces is attracting you, alluring you to make you look. See, all the alluring temptations in this world, there must be many different kinds. It could be a materialistic greed, or honor, or fame, or men-women relationships. There are many things. We are not looking at it because we want to, we are willing. But against your willingness, against your volition, it will make you turn back and look at it. And it will make you fixate upon it. That is why God says, do not ever turn back. The same Nabat is used in verse 17. Do, do not look behind you. Also, um, stay, stay means to really stand quietly. Also, it means delay. Stand quietly or delay. I mean, you have to run away right now, but you are not understanding what time it is, and you're just stopping there, delaying, standing quietly. And lastly, God says to escape to the mountains. That's the last command. We say there is atomic bomb exploded. The place is not that only the place where the atomic bomb exploded is not going to be harmed. It has a big radius of great damage. So in order for you to be completely safe from that great damage, you have to be at the most final place where you can be completely quarantined from the damage. So God is saying, going just the outside the city is not good enough because this is still within the radius of great damage of the judgment. So the ultimate final salvation can be obtained only when you go up to the mountain. That is the salvation that I want you to have and that's the final destination of the salvation which you obtain. That's what the Bible is telling us. We have gathered to the outside of the city right now spiritually but we must actually flee all the way to the mountain. It doesn't matter what the family members are telling us. Hey, you're not coming during us in the family event and gathering to choose a holiday but you have come here to God's spiritual mountain and I, I pray and believe that our Father God will protect our our ultimate final salvation to the very end.
그러면 이 뒤를 도망가고 뒤를 돌아보지 말고 머물지 말고 하나로 가야 되는데 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 하나로 가야
내가 신인가? So you may, you know, 나를 영화롭게, 나를 영화롭게. So you glorify yourself and oh, I think I am God. 아무리 사람이 자기를 영화롭게 하고 교만하다 할지라도 하나님은 단한 번도 자기 영광을 자기를 영화롭게 하는 교만한 사람에게 빼앗기지 않는다. No matter how much one may glorify oneself, God says he will never lose his glory because of man's arrogance. That's what God says in Isaiah chapter 42 verse 8 and Isaiah chapter 48 verse 11. Now, there was this arrogance, right? There can be this arrogance in the church too. Some people were arrogant too. If you look at it very carefully, you can see there's great immorality because the men of Sodom gathered together one in tribulations with the angel from heaven. Do you want to have a sexual relationship with the angel from heaven? When we look at it like that, it doesn't make sense. Even if they say that they are from heaven, Even if they say they are sent 아니다. by God, 아, the citizens of uh, uh, Sodom, they say, what does that mean? That means nothing. They want to have sex with the angel from heaven, a man sent from God. What do you mean? Hey, you're no different than people from the earth. And so they want to really trample upon the authority from the men of God. They want to really defame the person who does not recognize the authority of God. That person is arrogant. What happened? God tr instantly transformed that person to blind. And God says if the person is arrogant, he will execute judgment upon that person that instant moment. We must examine if something like that. Also in the church, there's immorality, if there's arrogance. Now, even if there are people who are arrogant, there is immorality. If there were 10 righteous people, then the church could be saved. But Sodom and Gomorrah did not even have the 10 righteous people because it was extremely corrupt and depraved. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, chapter 2, verse uh, 6, and verse 12 tells us that the judgment of fire that took place during the last days will certainly take place again in the end time. It forewarns of this judgment of fire. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 15, he says, what has been already will also be now, and God seeks what has passed by. He says that which has been already and that which will be has already been. For God seeks what has passed by. This means whatever happened in the past will surely take place again in the future, in the present. So this judgment that took place in the past during the days of Lot will not end as a historical event that took place in the way, way, way past in the ancient. But because it's something that will surely happen in the end time, Jesus proclaimed that the day of the Son of Man's return will be just like the days of Lot, and only those who will endure to the end will be saved. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 13, and but in when you have come so close to salvation, there will be people like Lot's wife will turn back. If you look back. Jesus spoke and, and warned that we must only move forward wishing, desiring a better country just as we have come to just choose our service here to desiring for the better country, our real home, right? But, but, but Jesus warned that there are people who want to go back Go backwards. In Luke chapter 17, verse 31, it says, The people who's on the rooftop do not go down into your house or wanting to get your furniture, whatever you left behind at home. You should never go back. Also, in Mark chapter 13, verse 16, it says, Do not go back to get your cloak. Do not go back to get your cloak or outer garment. So, in the last days, you know, this. Outer garment, we should not be too 
62절에는 뭐라고 했느냐? e n g r o s s e d with getting the o u t e r garment. And Luke chapter 9 verse 62 he says if you have a plow, 있는 사람은 if you have a plow, you should never look back. 라고 하시면서 Luke chapter 9 verse 62. 예수님이 이렇게 분명히 so 마지막 때 Jesus clearly warned of what would take place in the end time. And we should never turn back or look back. You know, um, trying to get what you have left behind you or get your outer clothes or forget your own mission or ministry. God, uh, Jesus has warned us that we'll be a lot of us who become like Lot's wife. So throughout the Genesis chapter 19 original text, we have gained so many lessons. But more than anything else, we must remember that this is a rapid situation where the judgment will take place in a matter of 12 hours. It was the most urgent time. Because this will take place in 12 hours. There are a lot of strong words that were used, and God was striking them with the words here. And so those people who hesitate, I mean, it shows that there are going to be a lot of people who hesitate. Even now, you know, our hearts are not united as one. And although the, the false accusation of heresy has been completely re resolved from us, but the word of, that was spoken through Reverend Evan Park is actually being fulfilled right now at a very rapid pace, right? We have never asked for this. It was actually a, a proposal that the Chong Up side actually made on their own because this is their centennial general assembly. This was really something that has been predestined by God before the ages, and God has determined to carry this out. That's why it happened. So we must be like. Make sure that we are unified and we are determined to go forward. You know, we are like the lots who have received this word directly, right? We must never be divided in our mind or our faith and beliefs. But we must be unified even more with. Uh, by paying a complete attention to the word of God in every sermon where the word is proclaimed, especially we really, really gather our strength together around Reverend, Reverend uh, Philip Lee because he is a person who God has established for us, right? Now, Reverend Reverend Park spoke of Lot's wife's faith in three ways. We must examine that our faith is not like that. First, 큰 구원을 등한히 여기는 자. Lot's wife's faith was like this. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3, who despised a great salvation? Even after she received it. And secondly, it's like a dog who returns to its own vomit. You think that you'll never be a person like that, right? But after, we come to understand the word of the righteous, and having known it, There will be people who turn away from the holy commandment and return to how they were before. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 20 to 22, it talks about a pig after being washed returns to a wallowing in the mire. Right? And thirdly, Lot's wife's faith was like a person who did not get ready or act in accord to the will of the master. It's like a slave who knew his master's will and did not get ready or act in accordance with his will. This is Luke chapter 12, verse 47. Do you know your master's will? So this slave who knew of master's will, saying that he will come quickly, but in verse 45 it says the master will not come, but he will delay. And the commentaries say that um, the slave expected the master to never to return. I hope the master will never come, so all of this will become mine. So slave thought to himself the master will come, uh, will not come quickly. Actually, he will delay. Oh, I don't think he's going to come. I think he, I think, I think, might, I think he might not come at all. So I think I can take a break and let's actually plunder everything that belongs to the master. You see, this slave knew of the master's will and did not get ready or act in accord with his will. And verse 47, he clearly says that slave will receive many, many lashes. And Greek word is to the point that all his skin will rupture and will be peeled off. 
주전 2067년 아브라함 was actually um, an event in 2067 BC when Abraham was 99 years old. After this turning point, Abraham receives amazing fulfillment of all the promises that he received. This was a great turning point when Abraham was 99 years old. And so this was a time when the number of the members of Abraham's household decreased the most. It was the time when the members were the most exhausted or tired. Hey, if it's going to be like this, and I'm going to go out I'm going to leave this household. Abraham is already 99 years old, but Abraham nothing is happening. Even Abraham is himself, Abraham until he was 99 years old, was very hard, right? It must have been very hard even for himself. How for more the people who have been following him all these years? It was the most dark time, the most fatigued time. But after that turning point, when Abraham turned 100 years old, then there became the fulfillment of the word. You see, Lot's family was now completely dissolved, right? Because of this, this is great. Um, this one family truly broke up. But after that, in Genesis 21, there's a great turning point now, great reversal. There is a saying that Abraham... And said, uh, Abraham, a, a born son in his old age, is great rumor. This impossible promise actually came true. This rumor was everywhere in the town. He says, 100 year old grandpa Abraham had a son. Or nine year old Sarah is nursing a child. So what does Sarah say? Sarah said, God has made laughter for me, and everyone who hears will laugh with me. I believe God has given us this laughter among the church. And so this rumor was spread to all the towns nearby us. And the God opened the door to the church in Philadelphia, and no one was shut it. I hope that you will believe that this door will never shut for us. Those who remain in the house of Abraham, who remain and never betray, will be able to partake in this true laughter of happiness. Let us pray. Father God of love, we thank you so much. With our strength, we cannot even take one step forward. And we pray like Apostle Paul, we will be able to press forward toward the goal laid ahead of us. Let us never delay. Let us never hesitate. But let us march on step by step. Father, please work. Unleash your power. All the members of Pyongyang Church, may all the congregations of Pyongyang Church, even the Sunday school children, will enjoy this eternal laughter and may this victory become eternal life, eternal victory. Thank you, Father. 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 Thank you